Senator McCain. Well, thank you for the question. You, you, you really identify one of the really major challenges that America faces. Co-payments go up, costs go up, skyrocketing costs, uh, which make people less and less able to afford health insurance in America. And we need to do all of the things that are necessary to make it more efficient. Let's put health records online. That'll reduce medical errors, as, as they call them. Uh, uh, let's have community health centers. Let's have walk-in clinics. Let's do a lot of things to impose efficiencies. But what is at, at stake here in this health care issue is the fundamental difference between myself and Senator Obama. As you notice, he starts talking about government. He starts talking government will do this, and government will do that, and then government will. And he'll impose mandates. If you're a small business person and you don't insure your employees, Senator Obama will fine you. We'll find you. That's remarkable. If you're a parent and you're struggling to get health insurance for your children, Senator Obama will find you. I want to give every American a $5,000 refundable tax credit. They can take anywhere across state lines. Why not? Don't we go across state lines when we purchase other things in America? Of course it's okay to go across state lines because in Arizona, they may offer a, a better plan that suits you best than it does here in Tennessee. And if you do the math, those people who have employer-based health benefits, if you put the tax on it and you have what's left over and you add $5,000 that you're going to get as a refundable tax credit, do the math. 95% of the American people will have increased m funds to go out and buy the insurance of their choice and to shop around and to get all those people will be covered except for those who have these gold-plated Cadillac kinds of policies, you know, like hair transplants. I might need one of those myself. But the point is that we have got to give people choice in America and not mandate things on them and give them the ability Every parent I know would, would acquire health insurance for their children if they could. Obviously, small business people want to give their employees uh, health insurance. Of course, they all want to do that. We've got to give them the wherewithal to do it. We can do it by giving them, as a start, a $5,000 refundable tax credit to go around and get the health insurance policy of their choice. Quick discussion. Is health care in America a privilege, a right, or a responsibility? Senator McCain? I think it's a responsibility in this respect, in that we should have uh, available and affordable health care to every American citizen, to every family member. And with the plan that, that I have, that will do that. Um, but government mandates, I, I'm always a little nervous about. But it is certainly my responsibility to certainly small business people and others and they understand that responsibility. American citizens understand that. Employers understand that. But they certainly are a little nervous when Senator Obama says, if you don't get the health uh, care policy that I think you should have, that you're going to get fined. And by the way, Senator Obama has never mentioned how much that fine might be. Perhaps we might find that out tonight. Well, why don't, we, why don't let's talk about this, Tom, because there, there was just a lot of stuff out there. Privilege, think, right, and responsibility. Well, Sorry, I, I think it should be a right for every American. In a country as wealthy as ours for us to have people who are going bankrupt because they can't pay their medical bills. For my mother to die of cancer at the age of 53 and have to spend the last months of her life in a hospital room arguing with insurance companies because they're saying that this may be a pre-existing condition and they don't have to pay her treatment, there's something fundamentally wrong about that. So let me, let, let me just talk about this fundamental difference. And Tom, I know that uh, we're on, under time constraints, but Senator McCain threw a lot of stuff out there. Number one, let me just repeat. If you've got a health care plan that you like, you can keep it. All I'm going to do is help you to lower the premiums on it. You'll still have choice of doctor. There's no mandate involved. Small businesses are not going to have a mandate. What we're going to give you is a 50% tax credit to help provide health care for those that you need. Now, it's true that I say that you are going to have to make sure that your child has health care because children are relatively cheap to insure and we don't want them going to the emergency room for treatable illnesses like asthma. And when Senator McCain says that he wants to provide children health care, what he doesn't mention is he voted against the expansion of the children's health insurance program that is responsible for making sure 
that so many children who didn't have previously health insurance have it now. Now, the final point I'll make is on this whole issue of government intrusion and mandates. It is absolutely true that I think it is important for government to crack down on insurance companies that are cheating their customers, that don't give you the fine print, so you end up thinking that you're paying for something, and when you finally get sick and you need it, you're not getting it. And the reason that it's a problem to go shopping state by state, you know what insurance companies will do? They will find a state, maybe Arizona, maybe another state, where there are no requirements for you to get cancer screenings, where there are no requirements for you to have to get pre-existing conditions. And they will all set up shop there. That's how, in banking, it works. Everybody goes to Delaware because they've got very pretty loose laws when it comes to things like credit cards. And in that Senator. situation, what happens is, is that the protections you have, the consumer protections that you need, you're not going to have available to you. That is a fundamental difference that I have with Senator McCain. He believes in deregulation in every circumstance. That's what we've been going through for the last eight years. It hasn't worked, and we need fundamental change. Senator, uh, we want to move on now. We come back to the hall here. We're going to shift gears here a little bit, and we're going to go to foreign policy and international right. matters if we Before can. Before we leave that, did we hear the size of the fine? <laughs> <laughs> Phil Elliott uh, is over here in this section, and Phil Elliott has a question for Senator McCain. Phil? Yes, Senator McCain. How will all the recent economic stress affect our nation's ability to act as a peacemaker in the world? Well, I, I thank you for that question because there's no doubt that history shows us that nations that are strong militarily over time have to have a strong economy as well. And that is one of the challenges that America faces. But having said that, America, and we'll hear a lot of criticism, I've heard a lot of criticism about America and our national security policy and, and all that, and much of that criticism is justified. But the fact is, America is the greatest force for good in the history of the world. My friends, we have gone to all four corners of the earth and shed American blood in defense, usually, of somebody else's freedom and our own. So we are peacemakers, and we're peacemakers. Is, is to know when the United States of America can beneficially affect the outcome of a, uh, of a crisis, when to go in and when not, when American military power is worth the expenditure of our most precious treasure. And that question has, can only be answered with someone with the knowledge and the experience and the judgment, the judgment to know when our national security is not only at risk, but where the United States of America can make a difference in preventing genocide, in preventing the spread of terrorism, in doing the things that the United States has done. Not always well, but we've done because we're a nation of good. And I am convinced that my record, going back to my opposition from sending the Marines to Lebanon to supporting our efforts in Kosovo and Bosnia and the first Gulf War, and my judgment, I think, is something that I'm a record that I'm willing to stand on. Senator Obama was wrong about Iraq and the surge. He was wrong about Russia when they committed aggression against Georgia. And in his short career, he does not understand our national security challenges. We don't have time for on-the-job training, my friend.